Hi guys, welcome back. I am going to talk today about something that is a little bit different than the last two topics. We are going to explore something that isn't corporate greed for a little bit because I thought it would be nice to take a break from that. So today's topic is this is a fun topic, but it's also a little bit more scary. Is that my theme? Is my theme just scary stuff? That's not what I wanted this to be. Okay, we're gonna have to reevaluate some things. But, um. So I picked this topic because I thought it was just fun and hippos are cute. But now I'm wondering if I picked it because it's kind of dark and I wonder if this channel's going dark. So. I'll have that life crisis later. Just for some background, how it's gonna start off, I'm gonna go through the background about hippos, some fun facts, and then we're gonna talk about two stories of some peculiar cases of hippos ending up in places they shouldn't be. So, roll the intro. <laughs> So, just to get familiar with hippopotamuses, I like to always start off with Wikipedia because I think it's a really good place to get background information before going to other sources. So, I pulled out some facts I thought were interesting already, and so I won't be reading this article word for word. I think you guys would not like that anyway. Hippopotamuses. The name comes from the ancient Greek word for river horse. And they are the third largest type of land mammal. Despite their resemblance to pigs, they are actually more closely related to whales, dolphins, and porpoises. And they di diverged from them 55 million years ago. One of the articles we're going to read is about like classifying hippopotamuses as humans. So... Let's go ahead and classify them as, as humans in our minds. This is interesting and terrifying. Despite their stocky shape and short legs, which is rude. I guess, you know what? That could be a compliment. They are capable of running 30 kilometers per hour, 19 miles per hour, which let's just round up to 20. That's a lot of miles per hour in short distances, though, which I don't blame them. They like to remain cool by laying in the river and they like to graze on grass. They are threatened by habitat loss and po poaching for meat and ivory canine teeth. I just had a separate and intrusive thought about why is poached eggs the same word? Like what's the etymology of poached eggs? If I do find out, I'm gonna insert the answer to that here. So it turns out it's an old French word, poacher that means to enclose in a bag. So I guess when you're cooking eggs in the way that you poach it, it turns out looking like a coagulated little bag. And then for hunting and fishing, it just means to bag it basically. So, look who's freaking smart over here. I knew it. Okay, etymology. So again, it means river horse, but the part I thought was interesting is potamus means river, which makes sense because of the Potomac River. And I just, you know, when little ding-dongs go off in your brain, you're like, whoa. That, that happened for me there. The plural for hippopotamus is hippopotamuses. M muses, hippopotamuses? But hippopotami is also used. So I say hippopotami. I just feel like it sounds better. So, until 1909, naturalists grouped hippopotamuses with pigs based off their molar patterns, but they were actually found to have their most closest relatives being whales and dolphins and porpoises, which is really confusing to me. I feel like that doesn't make sense, but you know what? Who am I to say what they're related to? They would know. That looks like a freaking pig if I've ever seen one. He's cute though. Look at it. Oh, wow. So much detail. Okay, I don't want to be here anymore. Blah, 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 blah. There's extinct species of hippopotamuses. There was a Malagasy. Tallahassee. 
hippopotamus that was smaller than the modern hippo, which would have been so freaking cute. Likely through a process of insular dwarfism, they got hunted off, it looks like. Why would we do that? That would have been so cute, would have been so fun. We could have domesticated them, parked them in our parking lots, ridden them around. Ooh. Just another random thought about that. They're called Kilo Pillow. Kilo Kilo Pillow Pitsify. Kilo Pillow Pitsify. I don't know why I'm like making this such a point. I guess I just like it. Kilo Pillow Pitsify. I don't Whatever. They are among the largest living land mammals. <laughs> Despite being semi-aquatic and having webbed feet, an adult hippo is not a particularly good swimmer, nor can it float. They move five miles per hour in the water and they need to breathe every three to five minutes. That's pretty dang good. Oh, sorry. I got somewhere weird. So I guess their penises retract into their bodies when they're not erect. So how do they pee? And then uh, I don't know. I don't. I didn't plan on reading any of this. I don't think we need to know that one. Some of the stories we're gonna read are about like how hippos are really scary, and it makes sense when you see these images of their jaws. The jaw hinge is located far enough back that the animal is able to open its mouth 180 degrees, which I think is like a humble brag. Weird flex, but okay. They have a natural sunscreen. Which would have been nice, God. Which is red colored. I wonder what that looks like. Oh, the secretion is sometimes referred to as blood sweat, but it's neither blood nor sweat. And it turns the animals into red orange color within minutes, eventually becoming brown. Did we all just think that was mud? So I guess one pigment is red and one is orange. So they, they like to mix their color palettes. Did I show you guys this? Cute, right. The Pigments are very highly acidic, so they stop disease-causing bacteria from growing on them, I guess. And their light absorption peaks in the ultraviolet lane range, creating a sunscreen. But oh my god, is this symbiosis? That's crazy. The world's fucking crazy, bro. The animals may synthesize the pigments from precursors such as amino acid triacine. Triocene? which is, I think, one of my vitamins. Is that a new topic? Anyway. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the natural sunscreen cannot prevent the skin of the animal from cracking if it stays out of the water for too long. So I guess they really do need the water. Um, and the secretion does not help regulate their body temperature. Their lifespan is 40 to 50 years, which is pretty dang good. And Donna the hippo was the oldest living hippo in captivity and she died at the age of 61. Sorry, I love you, Donna. They like firm, smooth, sloping beaches. So they mostly eat plants. Why do they have them big teeth then? What's what's going after hippos? Will this article tell us? <gasps> oh, sorry, I just read something weird. Let me see, let me show you. There are reports of meat eating and even cannibalism and predation. That's scary. The stomach anatomy of a hip hippo is not suited for carnivory and the meat eating is less likely caused by aberrant behavior or nutritional stress. I think we needed that in our brains. I don't think we want to know this either. Hippopotamuses mark their territory through defecation. While depositing their feces, hippos spin their tails to distribute the excrement over a greater area. Look how cute though. That's them. I hope that's not poop. I hate that we just talked about poop and now we're looking at that. Look at the freaking tiny ears. Like, come on, ba. <laughs> the dominant bull is called the beach master. It says, although they're not particularly social animals, they huddle together and the, the reason why is not really well known. Yawning serves as a threat display. At my work, I use yawning as a tactic to threaten to fall asleep. When hippos are overpopulated, they try to kill infants. They appear to communicate vocally through grunts and bellows. That's also how I communicate. So, and they may practice echolocation. Mm -hmm. What? 
Hippos have the unique ability to hold their heads partially above water and send out a cry that travels through air and water. That reminds me of like when you would try to sing a song underwater as a kid and the other kid would try to guess. That's not using it. They express threat and alarm through exhalations, which is how I express being tired. Their gestation period is eight months, which maybe I'll make a video about this one day. The longer the gestation period, usually that means the animals live longer and have like slower metabolisms and it takes more energy for the mother to make a baby. So they usually only have one baby that they put like a lot more work into and like nurture more. If they have like a short gestation period of like two weeks or something, they'll probably just have like a dozen babies and like let some of them die. Cause that's a numbers game when it's a longer gestation period. It's usually like you put a lot of investment into one baby and they have like little nurseries, I guess. The little ones engage in play fights. <laughs> and, oh, this is, I think, this is that thing I was talking about. In ecology, the RK selection theory relates to the selection of combinations of traits in organisms that trade off between quality and quantity of offspring. I also want to do a video on why animals in the cold are way bigger. So interspecies interactions. I'm going to interject with a personal story here, which is that when I was little, I went to Zimbabwe and Botswana and I saw a lion attack a hippo. So I couldn't get any of my own footage for this, but I found this video, which is very similar to the attack I saw. And um, this is from Barcraft TV. I'll link that in the description, um, but just thought it'd be cool to see. The hippo is considered extremely aggressive and has been reported charging and attacking boats, which literally has happened to me and I'll tell that story now too. So this video that I'm showing right now is very similar to what I saw, but I was in a much smaller boat than these people. I obviously was quite preoccupied when the hippo was charging us, but I have this video so you can see my boat, what that I was in. But at, we read earlier about how hippos kind of like undulate underwater. You'll see it. He's gonna like, he's jumping off the bottom. I was, when I was being chased by hippo, I was wondering how he was doing it. And now I know from that Wikipedia article, he's jumping off the bottom. Um, and I swear to God, my hippo was faster. The one that was chasing us was faster than this one. But that's exactly what, I, oh, oh, no. Whew. That's so close. That's what I saw. And we were in a much smaller boat and I jumped in my mom's lap and almost took the boat over. And that was more recently. That was in 2018, I think. Anyway, uh, small boats can easily be capsized by hippos. 13, sorry guys, they killed 13 people. I wonder if any other animal has been able to kill that many people. As hippos will often engage in raiding nearby crops if the opportunity arises, humans may also come in conflict with them on these occasions with the potential f fatalities on both sides. Okay, geez. Cultural depictions, I think this is interesting. I can skip like too much or like the older stuff, but I think it's interesting how like, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas is like a popular Christmas song. And there's a popular board game called Hungry Hungry Hippos. They've often been portrayed in popular cartoons as like a humorous character and they're like goofy and happy usually. Just kind of a paradoxical perception that could never happen. We just learned about how one killed 13 people. Also never say never that could happen. So that was Wikipedia. I read a lot more of that than I thought because I got fascinated. So now we're going to jump into the stories. I don't know why I did that. So now we're gonna read this article in Wired by Greg Miller from December 20th, 2013. The crazy ingenious plan to bring hippopotamus ranching to America. In the early years of the last century, the U.S. Congress considered a bold and ingenious plan that would simultaneously solve two pressing problems at once. A national meat shortage and growing ecological crisis. Ecological crisis. The plan was this. Hippopotamus ranching. That 
person didn't know the things we know. Um, also, they've had Greg Miller's name at the top, and I see a different name now, John Mualan. Mualan. I definitely thought hippopotamus meant river cow, which would have been fun, but it means river horse, which is incorrect. They're more like cows. Just my opinion. Hippos, imported from Africa and raised in the bayous of Louisiana, proponents argued would provide a delicious new source of protein for a meat-hungry nation. In the process, animals would gobble up the invasive water halogen talus high mm. that was killing fish and choking off waterways it was an epic win-win those don't work out do they the bill was introduced to the congress and in the newspaper editorials extolled the culinary virtues of lake cow bacon lake cow bacon gonna eat ya when you're not a kid so there are two fascinating men behind this scheme. One modest frontiersman and a soldier of fortune. The other a self-aggrandizing con man. Sorry, that first one didn't make sense. So he's modest and a soldier of fortune. Like what does soldier of fortune mean? Um, the other is self-aggrandizing con man. Both were spies. What the heck? They have a lot in common. So I guess each of these men had sworn to kill each other. But the cause of great hippo ranching brought them together. What a noble cause. What if they both fulfilled that that promise to kill each other through the hippos? So I guess it's an interview with like an expert on this topic. Wired, what was going on at the time that made hippopotamus ranching seem like a good idea? John Allen. the dawn of hippopotamus ranching in America was 1910 there was a very serious meat shortage. These were peak years of immigration. Cities were exploding. The meat industry was getting bigger and uglier and it could not keep up. America had solved its problems by moving west, but the frontier was closed. So it was a meat crisis, but it was also kind of an identity crisis. Why? How were hippopotamuses supposed to fix this? Ooh, Alan. The idea was that you could harness land that wasn't productive for grazing cattle, like swamps and bayous, so you can transplant hippos into these environments that weren't totally unlike the ones they lived in in Africa, which I guess is true, but- Why would you do that? You could suck up all the energy in what looks like wasteland and turn it into meat. I'm also pretty sure this is when people started eating pork products for breakfast because that wasn't always a thing. It was like something, and maybe I'll make a video on this. We all got tricked into eating pork for breakfast because the pork industry started telling us that's what you should eat for breakfast. And now we just think it's normal. Anyway, at the same time, there was a real problem with invasive water highest hyacinth plants. There still is, in fact. So let's not solve that through hippos. So a Louisiana congressman named Robert Bro Usard decided he could solve the water problem by bringing hippos, suck up the plants, and you could literally take one problem and solve it using another. Who else was involved in promoting this? Says why. Moo Allen. Well, Bro Seward has this congressional hearing and he needs an expert witness. The first is a geeky Apple researcher. The other two are Frederick Russell Burnham and Fritz Dukiasny. Dukiasny. Frederick Russell Burnham is this staggeringly impressive and totally forgotten figure from history. The Boy Scouts were founded in his image. He was the inspiration for Indiana Jones. He was a freelance adventurer who'd up and gone to Africa to fight British colonists because like a lot of people at the time, he thought this was a noble kind of project to bring civilization to Africa. He was once described as the most complete human being who ever lived. New life goal is to have that on my resume. Fritz Dukiesny was a boer, which were descendants of Dutch settlers in Africa. He was a really slippery fellow. He moved through life in a cloud of aliases. He was a virtuistic and ambitious con man. He fought against the British in the Second Boer War. This is the first time I've seen the words Boer War. 
and I don't know what we're talking about. So our next video will be on the Brewer War. One and two. Like Burnman, he was kind of a free-ranging spy. How did these two humans end up in the same story by Hippos? Burnman called him the human epitome of sin and deception. During the Boer War, the two men were assigned to kill each other. This is like star-cross lovers, but the opposite. And hippos. Hippo-cross lovers. Hippo-cross kill each other. Why? But somehow... The hippo plan brought them together. Bull Allen. They had this real rivalry, but that's one of those old-fashioned rivalries where you honor your enemy. That seems like that should be more common. When they finally meet, it's under this guise of being collaborators with Buizard in this hippo plan based on their experiences in Africa. <sighs> They're going to start essentially a lobbying firm to drum up donations from rich people. So... What we learn here is that lobbyists do not always have the best ideas. So obviously this didn't come to pass, says Wired. And Bowman says, It's an interesting experiment though. I've never tasted hippo, but I've read on many accounts that there's a tree stuck on my sweater. But I've read on many accounts that it's delicious. I bet it is. I bet it tastes like pork. And I bet it tastes like bacon. I bet it's really good. And I bet that there's a lot more fat. And I want to try it too, but I'm also scared. I don't know how feasible it would have been or how unintended ecological or like the ec ecological consequences. Oh no, I'm getting tired. We didn't get the hippos and we're not starving. So what happened in the meat crisis? What happened was the very beginnings of industrial agriculture. Rather than bring in new hippos that could have taken advantage of the lights, landscapes that didn't seem productive, we basically engineered those landscapes into more pasture and packed more and more of the same kind of animals onto the new land. You can basically trace a straight line from this moment in 1910 when another way, i.e. hippopotamus sees, we learned that, seem possible solutions to the ones we have now. Would have been a way funner world probably, right? I don't know, maybe we'd all be done. Which our feedlots and confinement operations and all attendant consequences involved. One interesting thing about the hippopotamus plan was that people were imagining that hippopotamuses were so large that you would not be able to ship them to the stockyards in Chicago like other animals. And I should say it wasn't just hippos. There are also proposals for importing antelope and building ostrich farms. They were basically open to anything, but you'd end up with a constellation of local food systems. It's very Michael Pollan-esque idea where you have things grow and slaughtered locally. The system that's more diverse and resilient. We're also one day gonna do a video on Michael Pollan. Maybe, um, maybe The Botany of Desire. That would be an interesting book to read together. Am I a read out loud channel? What do you find most interesting about this story? I think it's the idealism around this idea that people were willing to raise these really bold solutions and attempt to think through them. I think it's actually something beautiful that Congress would even listen to the idea of hippopotamus ranching. Um, it was a moment where anything seemed possible. Hi, editing mama here. And I did not realize that the beginning of this article is like a summary in an interview with the author and then it goes through telling the story in more detail. And I did read through that. I'm just gonna cut it out of this main video, but I am going to edit and post the longer version of this story. It's 15 minutes raw footage, so probably end up being like 10. So if you want to watch that, I will post that as a bonus video. So look out for that. Now we're gonna move on to another story about a hippopotamus population that was but somewhere weird. And this one is just as fun and interesting and actually still going on. And there's actual real hippopotamuses involved. Like I think hundreds. I'm... I'm fake news right now. I shouldn't say things before I know. Let's just read the article. That has facts in it. I'm pretty sure. Today, Today the, the next, next hippopotamus, hippopotamus population, population you didn't want, want to know. 
but exists right now. And they're from a drug kingpin named Pablo Escobar. Isn't he the guy from Firefest? I think so, but I'm gonna Google that. That was a weird end to my song. So Pablo Escobar is not only responsible for the ecological disaster of hippopotamuses in Colombia, but also responsible for the humanitarian crisis of Firefest. So thank you, Pablo Escobar. Anyway, he died in 1983. He had basically like a zoo. Should we read about Pablo Escobar? Maybe a different day. Kara, focus. In the late 70s, he had four hippopotamuses. By 2019, their population has grown to 100 individuals, causing concern for harm to native flora and fauna in the area. Maybe I'll read Wikipedia for some background. In the late 1970s, Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar kept four hippopotamuses in his private menagerie in his residence in Hacienda Napolis. I think I said that right. I actually have some confidence right now. They're deemed too difficult to seize and to move. Is it mean to not try or is it mean to try? They were deemed too difficult to seize and move after Escobar's death and hence left on the untended estate. That seems like how sometimes I deal with things, which is like, that's overwhelming. So I'm just gonna like let it grow worse. But the government decided. <laughs> um, by 2007, the animals had multiplied to 16. And how the heck did they get to 100? I mean, they must have a lot of babies since then. Oh my God, could reach 200. I feel like it's getting to the point where they they can't now fix it. Not gonna go down that rabbit hole right now. There's that guy again. Dun, dun. <laughs> Why pop up? Why scientists want to kill Pablo Escobar's hippos? Look at him. You can't. One of the most notorious criminals of all time. I, for a second, thought they were talking about hippos. He was the founder of the infamous drug cartel in the 1980s and responsible for kidnappings, bombings, and indiscriminate assassinations. That's not a word you want in front of the word assassination. At one point, he was thought to be the world's richest man. But the drug kingpin is also responsible for what scientists call an ecological time bomb. A group of hippos imported by Escobar to his private zoo decades ago has multiplied according to scientists and is now spreading through one of the country's main waterways. Last month, a study published in the Biological Conservation Journal said calling the animals was the only way to mitigate their ecological impact. It's obvious that we feel sorry for these animals, but scientists need to be honest. Hippos are invasive species in Colombia. If we do not kill a part of their population now, the situation can be out of control in 10 to 20 years. The rise of so-called <coughs> hippos. Oh no, YouTube, don't block me. Mm, snow hippos began in 1993 after authorities killed Pablo Escobar's... Killed Pablo Escobar, sorry. Just the human. Zoos didn't want them. They're logistically difficult to move because they got them big old snappy teeth. And people were thinking they would probably just die, but little did they know. Instead, they thrived. And good for them. Self-care. Um, over the years, scientists have tried to calculate how many hippos are living in the waterway. And I feel like we've already read that like seven times. I wonder if these hippos would have like different speciation things going on. Like if they would have slight genetic differences already. Like, I'm curious about, like, how quickly that would happen. Darwin. They have seized the evolutionary opportunity. They do not have natural predators in South America. Do they have natural predators in Africa? This is straight from Wikipedia. Hippos coexist with a variety of predators. Now, crocodiles, lions, and spotted hyenas are known to prey on young hippos. However, due to their aggression and size, adult hippos usually are not preyed on by other animals. The weather also helps. In Africa, the population is partly controlled by droughts, and Colombia does not have them. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> That's like a hippo explosion then. <laughs> Indeed, conditions in South America seem so ideal for hippos. They wish they had been there this whole time. Hippos say 10 out of 10. 
hippos say, we'll come back. Hippos say, don't kill me. They started reproducing at earlier ages. Live your life. Oh, this is interesting. Scientists say that hippos' environmental impact could affect the local ecosystem in a number of ways from displacing native species already under threat of extinction like the manatee to altering the chemical composition of the waterways, which brings us back to like that sunscreen thing that they said had a pH thing that was like from that symbiotic relationship with the microbes. But I'm also curious, like, do those microbes organisms live in the waterways how does the sunscreen work now because that sounded like it was dependent on a on another animal Am I making sense? Um, which could endanger fisheries the hippos are spreading across Colombia's biggest water basin there have been sightings of hippos it's like being in Jurassic Park movie I'm glad someone's as dramatic as I am this is not the first group of scientists to call for a call I'm gonna google call and I'm not ashamed of it. Coal means to reduce or control the size of something such as a herd by removal um, using tactics such as hunting or slaughter of especially weak or sick individuals. But some experts oppose the idea the sterilization program would be a better way to control their population, they told CNN, which this is BBC, so that's confusing. But such procedures are far from simple or cheap, which makes sense considering how violent and temperamental these hippos are. Um, we are talking about an animal that can weigh five tons, and they spell tons weird, and be very aggressive. I forgot these people were British. We even have, even though we have sedated the animal, it can almost tip the crane. We used to help with the procedure, you need a bigger crane. It was like being with the dinosaur in a Jurassic Park movie. Imagine how many vials of whatever they use to sedate these animals that they have to use. The veterinarian, which, oh my God, can you imagine being a vet and being like, congratulations, you're a vet. Your first job is to catch these hippos and make them sleepy and then chop off their Hi guys, do you like dogs though? Too bad. The veterinarian said the main lesson of the experiment was that castration alone is not an option. Because their wheelies got inside of that. Even we know that. Like a veterinarian? Especially considering the $50,000 bill. That is like an entire human salary that it took to castrate a hippo. Many of these hippos live in the wild. It is simply not possible to reach all of them easily. Meanwhile, they keep reproducing. Polarizing issues. So what's stopping authorities from taking more drastic action? The short answer, public opinion. The public? Come on, they're crazy. Don't do that. Some people in Colombia actually get very angry when they talk about the hippos. People tend to understand much more about invasive species when you talk about plants or smaller creatures instead of massive mammal that they may find cute. And who can blame them? That's a baby. That's a baby hippo, and we approve this message. We say, keep them. There have been no fatalities in Colombia, so maybe this is like a more pacifist species. There was a massive outcry when the Colombian army gunned down a hippo named Pepe in 2009. It was enough to lead authorities to make hippos legally protected, which is an obstacle to plan any, for any plans to call them. That is insane that they are legally protected. I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. Just, come on. What's happening? <laughs> he told BBC that a call has already been discussed, but that killing hippos is unlikely to happen soon. It is a topic that polarizes people. I just thought about how they fling their poop around. <laughs> Which is why we have to keep looking at other solutions. People's love for cuteness is unstoppable. Jeez. More proof. Hippos were deemed legally people by the U.S. courts. Some 100 hippos, and this is from 2021, so we're getting into more recent stuff. Some 100 hippos descended from a herd smuggled into Colombia by the... No we already know that. Come on, we are educated on this topic. Let's get to what is interesting and new about this article. The Legal Defense Council Fund, which sought the interested person's designation for blank hippos, called the ruling in the judge... The U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Ohio ruled that in a critical milestone, a larger effort to have the American legal system recognize enforceable rights for animals, 
So this part's funny to me. Legal analysts say the U.S. court has no direct effect in Colombia. This is Americans being surprised that we're like not able to do things in other countries that we are not a part of. What do you mean? It remains to be seen what influence this ruling might have on a lawsuit that seeks to safeguard the hippo's well-being. I love people. I do. I love them. I think they're so cute and irrational. And we can't help it. They're going to sterilize them using a contraceptive called Gonicon. It looks like it's also used in deer. I was going to look up what chemicals are in it, but I don't think we want to know. Learning is good, but not all learning. Sponsored by Pfizer. Ariel Flint, a staff attorney for the Le Animal Legal Defense Council, said that the federal court order is narrow. And the purpose that is to allow two U.S. wildlife experts to be deposed in support of the legal proceedings in Colombia. So, but their testimony is critical in ensuring that hippos are sterilized in a humane way and proving that sterilization is an effective option for any hippo. It's an effective option for any hippo. Get your shots, Pfizer. That may be euthanized. Uh, the Colombian courts characterize them as sentient beings entitled to some rights. Isn't that nice? That's the same thing we say about any human who's not Britney Spears. Okay, she can have a back. In 2018, a Colombian court granted legal personhood status to part of the Amazon rainforest in a landmark decision that urged the government to put an end to the region's deforestation crisis. Thank you guys for watching. I ended up cutting out another article here. It's really, really, really good. And the reason I cut it out is because this video is already very long and it actually is a super interesting story. So I didn't want it to get lost in the weeds in case other parts were less interesting here and people left and didn't make it to this video. So if you enjoyed this topic, please check out the short I will post that is about hippo trafficking and it tells the story through the lens of like a little girl who whose father is a hippo trafficker and she lives with these hippos and it's super super interesting that's the reason i'm cutting it out here so now there will be two shorts the extended version of the lake cow bacon story and then the story about the hippo trafficking so we're gonna have a long hippo week but thank you guys and this is my goodbye thank you for watching let me know if you like it Comment, like, subscribe, you know what to do. This is YouTube, you're not new to this, are you?